Hello and welcome. A new week, a new video created for you guys. This is the third week in a row that you guys vote for a video that you want me to create and I did create it. The last one is currently voted for building a local chatbot with JavaScript and Node.js. I'm very happy honestly with the progress that we're doing right now. It's kind of turning into a series focusing on AI integration with JavaScript. So for today's video, we're going to build a simple chatbot that can work locally and also you can connect it with large language model providers. As usual, we use the best framework right now for the web in case if you wanted to push it to the web, we're using Next.js. And with it language chain, we don't rely on language chain super heavily to like the last two videos. And by the way, all the code, you will find it in this reboot AI agent JavaScript. I think I should rename it to something more general because inside it, you will find agent, rag, how to integrate BDFs, how to connect to Llama, how to search to create search rag, and an even example with building LangGraph agent. Let's take a look what we're going to build today. We have the symbol chatbot that take an inputs and have some sort of button and a few animation. And we talking to an actual local model that we have on our machine. Let's take a look to what we need to install or run this chatbot and get these results. First thing that we need language chain libraries, community and core, whatever large language provider that you need, you don't need that, but it's in case if you wanted to switch to uh, ABI, you can do that also easily with a few lines of code. We need Olama because the whole concept of running large language model locally is centered around Olama. We need .env. We need Farmer Motion to get some sort of animation. We need language chain. We need, of course, React icons, React Markdown for parsing the coming large language model text. React Synthesis Highlighter and React GFM. One of the important notes that I want you to know in this tutorial, I'm using Cursor. This editor is blowing my mind, man. I'm using it with Anthropica 3.5. I don't know if people need to, me to create a video about it or not. With that, let's take a look what we need to do next before writing any line of code. As I said in the intro, Olama is the key to creating the chatbot that work locally. So we need to install it and then we'll load it and set up Olama and then select in what model that we want to run. So head to olama.com and click the load. There you will find your different variation for different operating system. Download what you want. In my case, I'm using Windows, so I'm selecting download for Windows. And after it's done, you just go normally with setting up the Olama. After Olama is set up is done. Open any terminal in your machine. Inside this terminal, we're gonna put the command line that go into the download the model that we want. But we need to select the model that will run on our machine. I'm gonna assume that you don't have a 40 gigabyte GPU that's running or your PC. I'm gonna select a small model. You can't go wrong with it. My first option will be the Lama 3.1 8 billion parameter. This model is extremely small, it's less than 5 gigabytes, and it functions greatly with, with thickest summarization and building agent and rag, especially if you give it a context that you want to work with. It's all right in text generation and it's all right in some of the minor logic, but I won't say it's a best model when you want to start to do a heavily application with it. The second option that I really recommend is the Quinn is amazing model also. It's also four gigabyte and a half. And finally, I recommend one of the Mistral models. We have the Mistral Nemo, which is also a very good model. It's slightly larger than the two options that we have. It's about seven gigabytes. If you have like a eight gigabytes of GPU, you can run any one of these models. So how are we to uninstall any one of them? Let's take a look to the 8B. We have here a command line, Olama run Lama 3.1, and here you can copy it, go back to your command line and put it over here and hit enter and it will automatically install for you. 
And after it's done, we can start writing our code. As every video, I don't want you to worry about the code. All the code you will find in the repo that I have created. The first thing that we need to set up is our files. We have one ABI folder with just a root GS and a simple page GSX that you can work with that have the front end and send the request to the ABI chat that we created. Let's take a look to our ABI logic first before we go to the front end. The back end is very straightforward and simple. The first thing that we need to do is importing library and component that we want to work with. Here the main component that we want is Olama from language change slash Olama. And here the second component library that we're working with is chat message history and the human message and AI message, both of them from language chain. And here we have also optionals. You don't need this, but you can also switch to an ABI if you wanted to with a few line of code. Chat Google Generative AI from language chain Google Gen AI. And also optional chat brom template in case you wanted to add a brom template for your chat. Here I initialize the main chat history message that I'm going to store the chat history inside. Then I created symbol function that will handle our post ABI points. This post ABI point is necessarily because I want to send the parameter called the questions, which is our input. It's going to be a JSON, so we don't have to work out with form data and get a node byte in the KGS. But then this is the next important step is set up Olama itself. In normal cases, Olama work on the local host 11434 board. If you open this link, you will find Olama is running actually. And here I selected a name of the model. Here you put the name of the model that you want. It really depends on the model that you have. In my case, I using the code Quinn, which is one of the recommended also model, but code Quinn is not very good as Lama 3.1 8 billion parameter to be honest. If you want to the Ulama library ABI and you can you can find actually option here that you can run Ulama with a stream option and give it just a questions and it will generate it as a chunks. You have to be sure because this is the key point that you should be careful when you are working with Ulama. If we switch to for example Google generative AI I, you will find that chunks that you coming back have a content and you need to access it to get your text. And instead just of saying chunks, let's get back to our code. We have here the main search history. We can add messages to it, which is the human message that we are sending, which is the questions. It is a slightly complex code in our chatbot. It's creating a readable stream. A readable stream will handle the stream response from our AI model. Here it take a function called a start and you can best control controller to it. I have here three things that's important to run this stream to control the response, a last word, a buffer and a full response. Then I have here a for loop that's waiting for the stream to happen. Here this model that we created above I said selecting the stream method and there is also the invoke method which is will return the entire text at once. You don't need to do the stream if you in case if you used invoke instead of stream. And I best it, I best for it the questions. And I, I wait for the response of it and I get the chunks. Not the chunks dot content. And here I append the chunks to the full response and to the buffer. The buffer will split into words when, because when we're creating the stream over here, the model return a part of a word, not an entire word. Let me show you. I will send a message from the front end to the back end. And let's take a look to our model. As you can see here, the model send a part of words, like the first letters in the two letters. As you can see here, the word natural is split to two. This is why I created this buffer to handle this kind of stuff. And I created this if statement to check on the word links. Because I don't want that stream return a part of words that I don't understand when I'm reading and it's extremely fast. So it's going to be a chunk of words 
like Gemini when it's work. We get these words from our buffer over here. And these words, we break it here by slicing it. And we send the complete words with the controller in Q that will create something called text encoder and encode our message message and send a JSON string file. Basically, it will return the stream as a string. This is how you handle it when you're working with a stream response. And also I have here an argument called last word. It's a parameter that I send from the words. I get the complete words over here, I split it, I get the last one in the array and I send it. Why? Because I want to know when the chunk end and start so I don't have duplicate in the words in the front end. And I keep the last word in the buffer over here. And finally, in the end, I do the same thing if something remaining in the buffer, because I'm keeping the last word in the buffer, I send it over here, the same, like the same thing. But the only thing that I send different here is last equal true. This is will send a signal for the front end to stop watching for a coming stream and end the animation for streaming the response on the front end. And after that, I add the AI follow response that we created on the top to the message history and close the controller to end the stream. And here the response is the stream that we created over here, which is basically the, renewable, the readable stream. And with that, we have our logic for the back end done. To be honest, the front end that I have created over here is not my UI. It's created by cursor chatbot that I ask it to create a creative and cool kind of chatbot that have a unique color and add some React icons here. The CPU is the AI and the user is this person icon and have a here send the button over here with the icon. The input is get highlighted and bigger when I click on it and also the chat boxes over here. It's, it's, it's not the best chat out there in terms of UI, but it's just for the tutorial. The first thing that we need to do is importing our libraries that we're going to work with, like React State, React Use Effect and Referee, React Markdown, Remark GFM for parsing the coming response, Scientix, highlighter for, for our response. Here we have Dark Plus also from React Scientix Highlighter, motion and animation from Farmer Motion, and a couple of icons from React to put it to the buttons and the inputs. I have here a simple array that will display a couple of options that you can change. I am talking about these four options here. This is an, a, a symbol options that you can send to our AI and it will send you a response back, but you can change in here or increase it or decrease it. And this, this option will automatically disappear when we select one. Let's click on this one and then voila, the options are gone. Right now we have some sort of text coming back. I have here two main components, the markdown, the chat stream. The markdown will handle displaying our text that's coming back to parse it and make it look slightly better in case if the format is coming is a little bit harder. This part of logic is created by cursor. It's, it will process the content that's coming back to look for this breaking lines, the asterisk, the quotation marks, all the stuff to parse it correctly and make it look neat and good. Here I'm using a React Markdown to parse the entire thing and then give it the plugin Remark GMF. I'm using Tailwind also for the styles. And here I give it a couple of components, like if internet return a return link, if I wanted to turn this into a full rag that would work with web a code in terms of we had the code coming back. And also this is just for syntax to make it look better. It's not necessarily to do it, but you know. I wanted to create something nice for you guys. We're using this markdown inside our chat stream, which have the main component logic that we want to look at. We have here the states that we want, like the question, the message, if the chat started or not, 
And here we have chat contain referee, which, which will look to the bottom of our chat to scroll automatically when we have the stream coming to make it look like chat GBT. Here we have a symbol form submission handler. And here we have the main logic for start starting the chat. Starting the chat function here will take the initialization con questions that we send, uh, set the chat started through, and set the questions for false miss to make the input empty when we send the question. And it will set this question that we send to the message history array so we can have this nice inputs that one is verbal for user and the one gray one for the AI and the input as you can see here is clean and it's decent looking but then we have to handle the response that is coming back from our stream the first thing that we need to do is send the request to the chat ABI which is in it which is in ABI slash chat it's a post message and the header is application JSON and we send a body and it have a stringify object that have the questions. If we have any error, we will get HTTP error status and the response status, which will tell us what's going on. And here we're handling the stream response, which is slightly difficult to do usually, but it's super easy here. And we here get the response from the body, get reader. And reader will use it to read the entire format. We have also the decoder to decode the coming value that is coming. We here have a a while loop oh, for true. Okay, we will end it actually. But then we have here a while loop that will read the stream chunk by chunk, as I wrote over here. The reader that we created have a function called read that have done and a value. If it's done, we'll break the while loop because it's true here. If it's not, it will continue. The chunk will be decoded by using the decoder, and we get text and the last word and is lost from our chunks and here we handling updating the message state array that we have using this simple logic the last message will take a look to the last new message that links that we got and in case if it's ai we will have to remove the last word if it's duplicated because the buffer have the last word and we set it into our state so we get this lovely looking input chat to get this chat between the input and the user as you can see here and if is the last thing that is coming from the stream we will break the while loop that we have and also we break it was done and we have here catching error to display what's going on in if anything went wrong and display in a console and send a message with the error it will show up actually over here for you so you don't Get confused with the what's going on exactly in the background. For the rendering for the UI, it's straight forward. It's a simple dev with an emission presence, which I'm using a former emission over here. A motion dev for the animation that it's having. And you can take a look to the entire GSX elements over here. I have form in the bottom that have an input and a button. The input will take the questions that we have and the button will send it. And as you can see, handle submit is the function that we use to send the entire code, the entire questions to the back end. And here we have is a chat started. And in case if the chat is not started, we will display the option that we have. And with that, gentlemen, we are done for this video. It's a simple and easy to create. I didn't have any challenges with it. Only the stream part is a little bit difficult. We can switch the stream to invoke and it will be easier for you and return a simple response JSON format. I'm going to make another vote for the coming week. So please people go ahead and make my day. I'm very happy with the interaction we have in here with you guys selecting what you want me to create and I am creating and we creating this kind of loop of creating a videos that is not well created on or have a lot of example on youtube yeah ease of use is not that great but i'm happy with what i'm doing and i hope you guys are learning from it with that being said my name is sam Dean or sam billy can you call me sam and see you on the next video